welcome to one and all to the early show with me as ever your host Aidan Stone. Now I know what some of you are thinking, uh, why does he always wear the same clothes, the same red velvet jacket as one with by Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor, the same Vic 20 t-shirt, the same stupid hair which spoils and messes with the green screen, well there is an answer, only clothes I got, no, the real answer is that I've got a penchant for detail, oh yes sir, a penchant for attention to detail. Uh, like look at this example, look at this picture here. You think, some of you thought, it's just a picture. So what, of Boggle Hole and Raven Scar, but no. Look, it's actually moving, can you see that? And it's actually a live feed of what's going on outside the window. Ah, yeah, I know some of you spotted it. Now last week's show was so long, that the sun moved from here all the way over to there. And if you don't believe me, look at the shadows on the floor and um, you'll see how they changed. Now, my first guest this morning is uh, he's going to give us a task that I've already done and I want to tell you about it. Now, before I entered teaching, I was giving training sessions and talks and lectures on creative thinking and I wrote a book about it. And in the book, I mentioned one of my uh, childhood heroes. And I thought, why didn't I write to him, tell him about it? So I did. He was uh, one of Britain's best loved um, children's television presenters through the 70s and 80s. And he won every, every um, award for everyone's nation's favorite presenter every single year um, until he retired. So I was really pleased that he wrote back and he said, why don't we go for lunch? So I got to meet him. I got to go around his studio and see where he created the, uh, all his ideas for his television programs, Vision On, Take Heart and Heartbeat. And Morph was there. And that was the day that I met Tony Hart. But not only did I meet him, but he also wrote the foreword to my book. I see that there? And I'm glad he did, and I'm glad I wrote to him because, sadly, two months later, he died. So the message for today is, if you've got an idea, do it. Do it now. Do it, because this moment may not come again. So let's meet my first guest, massive action expert, Dave Heiner. Dave, it's wonderful not to have you with us this morning. Thank you, Ed. It's literally lovely not to be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not all there, anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, uh, some of you older people might remember that, uh, that Mr. Heiner here, he came to visit us, uh, we were very, very gratefully received, he came to visit us a couple of years ago and gave us some, some rhino talk then. Then he sent a video, um, like a follow-up thing. Now, this is a guy who doesn't mess about, all right? So he, how many people, how many schools have you, or people have you spoken for that, that, so far that you think there's an estimate you came up with? Yeah, well, over the last 20 years, as of January this year, it was one million delegates. One million delegates, you see, and he knows them all by name, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he follows them up. He tracks you down to see have you followed his advice. Yeah, he does that. So, uh, Dave, uh, I've got a few questions for you, and I want to see where you, what you want to make of it. Now, you've said... Yeah. you've. We know that you are uh, the motivational guy. You talk about really going for it. But um, why do you tell people not to be a positive thinker? What are you talking about? Uh, well, I, the world is full of people who talk the talk and think, overthink things. And the people who achieve are the ones who do something. Ah, so I don't want people true. not to think, but I don't want people to get sucked into this vibe of one of them who think positive and the whole world's groovy. No, 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 no. I want people to think, plan, and then take massive action. That's where you get the from. It's, <laughs> it's about taking, how cool was that? It's about taking action. It's those that do. Anyone dreams, few do. What, 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 tell me again, what sort of action are we talking about? Positive action towards, towards an objective, something you want to achieve. Right. And um, now you... You talk a lot about, when, when you talk about this rhino thing, what, what's that about? 
Well, according to author Scott Alexander, who wrote a global best-selling book on motivation, he says there are two types of people. There are, there are rhinos and there are cows. And 97% of the population behave like cows and 3% of the population behave like rhinos. And what they do is a rhino, if you think, imagine yourself either on safari or at a wildlife park, if a rhinoceros sees what it wants, it doesn't go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll go after that next week. No. A rhino goes, having it, and it charges at the thing it wants. It goes after the goal. Now, these are just 3% of the population. 97% behave like cows. Cows hang around with the same people all the time. I'm sure none of us do that. Um, and they see what they want and go, uh, probably won't get it. I don't really care. My friends will laugh at me if I fail. I'll just stay here. So be a bit less cow and be a bit more rhino because the truth is that all of us, e even me, even, even your t teacher, Mr. Instone, all, all of us have had moments in our lives where we've gone rhino and achieved big. So we can. So all I want us to do is flip the statistic and be honest and real that 3% of the time, we're going to have bad days, cow days. But 97% of the time, if we choose and take action rather than just think about it, dream about it and talk about it, we can achieve big. So how do we do that? How can we, how can we do this flip? How can we be less milky milky and more? <laughs> <laughs> and a bit more having it rhino time, yeah. Yeah, uh, how, how can we, how, what, what tips have you got for us? Because we're sitting at home, uh, you know, we're, we've, been, we've been sent these tasks by our teachers, yeah, um, stuck in front of a screen, although a lot of the tasks we're trying to get people off the screens, get them to, get them to do different things. You know, how do you get motivation? How do you get motivation when you don't feel like it? Right. Two things. If you're sitting at home feeling a little bit like, <laughs> right? if, you, if you're lacking motivation and, and you want to be a little bit more what you need to do is two things number one is you need a big goal something that gets you out of bed in the morning it right. makes you want to get up and go running in the rain because you're training for a marathon for that cause that burns in your heart or because you know you want to be a neuroscientist you need your grades so you're gonna spend an hour a day studying stuff that at the moment you find complicated and lacking understanding on because your reason to do it your purpose that's the second thing is bigger than your fear of failure you are willing to do what other people are not prepared to do because your reason to do it and your goal is big a big hairy goal is that Absolute, that's <laughs> big hairy goals <laughs> uh, yeah if your big hairy goal doesn't put a sort of a a bizarre image in your mind that you haven't you haven't thought big enough have you really no nah. yeah. uh, i mean the the most common question i tend to get asked is that well everyone's taught to set realistic goals so surely that's right well that's why most people are average because most people set realistic goals realistic, average, boring every day yeah. goals, goals. The three percent of the population who are rhinos who set big goals, they tend to achieve more than the rest of us put together. There's a clue here. Right. So now you talk a lot about assumptions. Um, what do you mean? <sighs> this this is the bane of my life, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, because at the age of 30, I woke up and realized I hadn't achieved anything like either I wanted to or was capable of. Well, that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, i'm 52 you know but mentally <laughs> mentally still about 12 uh, but i woke up at the age of 30 and realized that actually i'd done nothing and i had a great <laughs> sense of shame about that i'll be honest with you and so i started to try and find out what was true could i achieve those things and for the first time instead of understanding that sometimes we fail i accepted that sometimes i'm going to fail that's life. Right. And I accepted the fact. And you know what? Out of every five big goals I set, I'll be honest with you, twice, I fail. Three times, smash it out of the park. 
I've done more in the last 22 years of my life than the first 30 put together. And the things I've done, the places I've been, have just been outrageous. Why? Because I decided to find out what was true and not believe the assumptions either I was telling myself or other people told me. Do you think that's a stumbling block for people that a lot of us think, oh, I can't do it, um, or I'm no good at it, or if I try to do it, I might get caught out and people reveal uh, people realize i am actually totally talentless do you think there's uh, a, do you think there's a risk of that that people don't do stuff because they're frightened of failure yes 100 percent. they're also frightened of success in some cases depending upon their mindset and approach to life how but there are two and how there are two types of success say again how can you be frightened of success i i want to win you know of course i'd want to win how can i be frightened of that what do you mean because of peer pressure, be that family, friends, the community you're in, some people don't like the risk of having people not like them. Because right. inherently, right. at a psychological right. level, we all yeah. want to be accepted. Yeah. And sometimes when we achieve big, there are some idiots who try to knock us down a peg or two or go, oh, look at her, look at him. Who do they think they are? Because they are actually afraid of you changing because it means it highlights to them that they've not done what they want to with their lives. And so sometimes people don't achieve for fear of what other people will think of them. So in a way then, are you saying, is it a possibility then, if we have this big, hairy, audacious goal, this ridiculous out, out, way out there thing that we want to achieve, is there a, is there a, 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 re, is there a way we should really be thinking, uh, keep it to yourself? We shouldn't be going around shouting it around the place, should we? Because people might put us off or go, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, good luck with that. Oh, yeah, it's not really you, is it? Do you, I mean, is that a risk there as well? That, well, there's a risk, but I would actually flip it. I would tell everybody so that, let's just say, a, let's just say, Mr. Insane, you came to me and said, Mr. Heiner, I'm going to write a global best-selling book on um, how to include Doctor Who in science GCSE syllabus, which you'd be really good at. Um, <laughs> I might go, oh, I don't want my friend to fail or I don't want him to succeed. You know what? No, don't do it, Aid. Now, you could turn around to me and go, oh, okay, then I won't. Or you could go, no, support me and hold me accountable. You see, these are two things, and, and I should explain to those who can't remember or haven't seen me before, my, all of my work is based upon 258 top achiever interviews. I'm a researcher. And I've interviewed really successful people. And these people do two things that the rest of us tend to be a little bit scared of. And that's that they positively seek support where, you know, things they don't know or don't understand. Mm -hmm. And they seek to be held accountable. Whereas the rest of us, the 97%, mm, we, we tend to avoid getting support because sometimes we're arrogant. We think we already know it or we don't need support because it highlights the fact that we're not as good as we thought. And we avoid accountability because we like to get off the hook and go on the Xbox instead of working. Mm -hmm. Successful people seek accountability and support. That's why you should encourage people to tell the world their massive goals so the world can hold them accountable, but also you ask them for support. It's like, when, uh, it's like when, um, uh, people laughed when I said I was going to go into stand-up comedy. Well, they're not laughing now. They're laughing now! <laughs> <laughs> that was Bob Monko or something. <laughs> when I did comedy, it was more like. <laughs> I'm getting into trouble for this. You realise that it's a family show. Uh, <laughs> so now, uh, after we have had a little chat and everyone's watched the show, uh, we we all go into our tutor groups and we. Uh, and we, we reflect, we reflect on the speaker of the day, the guest of the day. So it's always good to have something to reflect about, a, a task, a, something that we should be thinking about, something we could discuss in our tutor groups. What mirrors what you should do? Mirrors. Mirrors? Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant for reflecting. Yeah. Right. Um, so, sorry, in the tutor groups, okay? Yeah. There's, there's, there's one thing that will one set ev everyone up to be bigger, better, more effective and successful. They can do it in the tutor groups, at home, or even when you're back at school. And that's to skill up and smash your fears. Use this time to skill up. So in the tutor groups, I want you to research what's the skill I'm missing? 
what could I learn? Is it an instrument, a language, a new piece of technology, something that will take you from there to there compared to everybody else in your generation when they're, you're out there applying to university or for jobs? And if there is something within that that you're afraid of, don't understand, or you, you pretend you don't care about, but actually you do, that's just fear. Let's just say hypothetically in studies, it's maths or science, or let's pick on something in maths, algebra. Right? I am still totally naive on algebra. To me, it's like it may as well be a foreign language. Um, but if I needed algebra to achieve my goal, I would go rhino on it during this time. I would smash my fear. I would five to 10 minutes a day, or in your case, in the tutor time, I would absolutely go rhino on it. I'd watch videos, consult teachers, speak to fellow students who, for whatever reason, find algebra really easy where I struggle. Maybe I can help them with something I'm good at that they struggle with. But take massive action. Set yourself a big, fat, hairy goal. Right, so that's what we'll do. We will. Uh, after we've watched this, we will uh, discuss with each other what those goals could be and uh, back each other up on it because that's what a tutor group's for. We'll back each other up on it and we'll say, ah, oh, right, you want to do that? How about this? How about that? And uh, and that'll start the that'll start the process that'll start the process going. And and if and if I, I think if one of our tutees comes up and says uh, something that's well, you know, and it's something that uh, is a little bit half-hearted, then we can all say. No, come on, let's go for this. Let's do it properly. What, what is the real, what is the real reason behind this? What is the real goal behind this? And really go for that, the ridiculous one, not, not. Um, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get nine out of eight out of ten in my next test. No, you know, we're going to get, we're going to go all the way. Let's go for it. And what's behind the fear of that thing you don't understand? What, why yeah. are you afraid what's of you learning it? Yeah. yeah, 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 and then charge at it. Uh, well, this is great, Dave. This is great stuff, as always. Now, I know that you've given us some stuff that we're going to... I'm going to put the links out to the tutors as well, some extra bits and bobs, some uh, videos and other clues that we can have a look at that's going to help us uh, get our bigger goals. Uh, but uh, I've, I've got to ask you the, uh, one more question, and that one more question is, what one more thing can we do to succeed? We've talked about what's skilling up, we talked about all this. What one more thing? Okay, don't do what everybody else does. Let me give you an example. There's a gold medal athlete for this country that your parents will remember called Chris Akabusi. And he taught me a quote when, the, when I've shared this metaphor with students, it has changed more students' lives than any other quote I share. Right. And it's don't look up to people, look into them. Use this time to track down a mentor at the very highest level, someone who has got the skill set you need, be it a hobby, a sport, a curriculum subject, or a future career or a business, anything at all in your life you want to be amazing at, track down a mentor at the very highest level and get them to coach you. Why on earth would you settle for an average coach or mentor? Go to the very best. And if anybody watching this is going, no one would mentor me, well, that's an assumption. We've had students get yeah. mentored by millionaires, billionaires, captains of industry, entrepreneurs, neuroscientists. Um, we had one young lady get mentored by Barack Obama on international politics. So in the words of the playgrounds of Birmingham, where I'm from, if you doubt yourself, come and have a go. Try and prove me wrong. Go and find out the truth. Find out how good you really are, guys. That is sending a tingle down my spine because... Um, we know because I've spoken to some successful people as well, um, and we both know that if you write, actually bother to get in touch with a hero, a, a potential mentor, they're actually genuinely, genuinely pleased to hear from you. And we're talking about this time, this this lockdown time, this strange time that we're in, that we're in right now. Uh, most of your heroes are sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> It's and more perfect. Important, it's absolutely perfect. It, it, you're absolutely spot on. I've never thought of that. You're absolutely bang on. It is the ideal time to approach people. And furthermore, you're not approaching them for a signed photograph like some crazed fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're approaching them saying, I want to understand how you think and behave. I want to model you. They will be flattered and humbled. And if they don't reply to you, they don't deserve you. Go on to the next one. Yeah. I, that, that is a brilliant point you made there. I think we add, we'll add that to the tutor task that we're going to think of a skill, but we're going to link it. We're going to link it to a potential mentor. And if that's, you're going to write a book, who's your favourite author? Uh, 
find out how did they get published find out how did they how did they keep writing let's get in touch with jk rowling or whoever it is let's do that let's link it to a person and don't believe get other the letters people. written yeah get the letters written by wednesday afternoon yeah if you're, talk, if you're talking about writing a book i was told by my english teacher heiner you're never going to write a book are you i've written 40 i've published 100 <laughs> really yeah five number ones <laughs> Don't make assumptions about yourself. Go and find out what's true, guys. That, this has been brilliant, David, as ever. I think we'll do that. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to do it myself, yeah. So um, great to have you with us. And uh, remember, when it all opens up and you fancy the North uh, Yorkshire coast, uh, you'll be more than welcome to come and visit once again. God bless you all. And I, I I will consider it an honour and a privilege to come and visit you all again one day. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Dave. David Heiner. Deep inside lockdown control. Hi there. Uh-oh, this looks bad. Look at those two not socially distancing near that Austin Allegro. I think I'd better have a word with those two. Out on your exercise? I hear your online learning has arrived. You better get back home and log into Teams. Look at these two messing about in the street. Don't you know children can be super transmitters of the virus? I was getting bored on the computer so I came outside. You need to stop and think about others. Uh oh, these two aren't even in the same family group and they're way too close together. Yeah, but we're really good mates. My droid RU12 will show you how to do it. We'll just squeeze through here. What between that Morris Marine and that Austin Maxi, are you insane? To get it right, you need to imagine there's a stupid robot in between both of you. And then you can go about your business. That wasn't so hard, was it? And don't touch your face. Remember, I won't be there when the lockdown restrictions are lifted, but the virus will be. Now, my interview with Dr. Richardson last week was so long, I had to cut it up into sections. So let's rejoin him now for part two of 10 as he tells us about EPQs. Intermission. <whistles> End of intermission. We've got year 11s who, uh, who don't have to do anything. They don't have to do any coursework, they don't have to revise, mm -hmm. they don't have to do anything. So. They're sitting at home, nothing to do. What could they do to further their education during this, this time? What plans have we got? Um, well, for, there's a, a, a range of op opportunities. I think uh, the, the chance of having an extra term to start your, your A-level, I think, is something that both you and I would have jumped up at the, uh, at the time. So... Um, we're offering uh, either pre-A level courses or taster courses um, and it's also an opportunity to, to start looking at things that maybe you wouldn't have considered. So, uh, for example, things like the EPQ program. What's EPQ? What's that? E, what does it stand for? Extra century? Um, uh, hang on, I've got, it, I've got it. An excellent person of quality, is that it? Uh, could be, could be if they do well in it, but uh, no, it actually stands for the Extended Project Qualification. Um, now this is a qualification that sits um, slightly above uh, an AS in terms of UCAS points, um, but is an opportunity to show independent study skills on a project that you have some interest in studying. And that project can be anything. That can be from um, rebuilding an engine to drawing a, a, and producing a dress to looking at differential equations uh, to study the phases of the moon. Right, so something you're interested in, you can turn it into a project and then universities will take notice of that and say, well done, you've got loads of points. Yes. So you could do it on anything? Anything. So yeah. if I fancied making tutus, uh, would, that would work, would it? Uh, tutus is, is one that has successfully happened this year. Yes. So tutus would oh. be uh, 
uh, we, we have history with. So let's say a student has got an idea, they want to do one of these EPQs or they want to get a project running. What do they do first? Who do they talk to to see if their idea is any good and how do they start? Okay, so you have to have a, a mentor, somebody that uh, uh, will guide you through the, the, the process and um, has in some way the same interests as, uh, as, as you have. So um, again, it, it, it doesn't have to be um, a, a teacher, but uh, obviously it's easier at school if, uh, if you have a project that uh, you can discuss with, with a member of staff. So should we say that if they've got an idea, they get in touch with the teacher they think could be the one interested in supporting them, or their tutor maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the tutor, or again, myself, if they want some more general information on, uh, on how the process runs. Or if, um, or if there's any other questions about it, they could, they could just get in touch with you maybe straight away. Yeah, yeah. We'll Inside. feed them more information. Yeah, yeah. Right, on that then I think, uh, Dr Richardson, thanks for filling us in on that and uh, I think in the next week or two you'll be back to talk about, what was it, options? Uh, yep, we need to start thinking, school doesn't stop just because pupils aren't here, we need to, uh, we need to start thinking about the options for next year's year 10 uh, and also some options for uh, next year's year 9s. Dr Richardson, thank you very much. <laughs>